Hi, Mary Grace. How you doing? So uh, this is gorgeous. And, and I, I really, really think that you've worked just as hard as anyone in the class. And it, it's very, very apparent. Um, you know, a, a lot of students don't understand, you know, uh, do you, okay, here, I'll, I'll submit this and then you tell me what's wrong with it and I'll fix it. And then, and then I'll submit it again and you give me an A. And, and I, you have not taken that approach whatsoever. You've taken a very active approach here um, in ensuring <laughs> that you're going to get an A. Um, and you, and this is a work. There's no question about it. I'm, I'm so pleased with where this has come. Um, we still have a, a little bit of ways to go. I mean, for you to work on this, um, before I would consider it for my final portfolio, it most definitely is portfolio quality work. Um, there's a couple of things. Okay. So, um, the cover is really nice. I, I just really think this gradient here is working and, and the whole yoga, that whole um, inner reflection thing is, is really, really coming through on the cover. So that's beautiful. I mean, you've got the visual um, communications, you've got the visual connections down and that's great. And uh, the I think that the gradient, but most obviously the typography has set that tone. There's a couple of things I want to do. Um, I want to talk a little bit about your using um, um, mixing um, sans serif typefaces with serif, which I have not seen any of in this um, this whole publication. This is all sans serif typeface throughout. And I understand that you're going for a particular look in a particular feel, but one of the requirements of, of course is the ability to show that you have, can effectively um mixed type typefaces so that i would consider moving forward um as far as the the, the mass head let's start at the mass head mass head looks beautiful i've i've i thought that was good from weeks ago i i really i thought that, that was a great mass head so um the issue with the mass head though is that is you've got these really super deep descenders on the y and the g which leaves very little room on top, but a whole lot of area at the bottom of the um, the masthead that you need to work within. And I say that because I'm thinking that this issue number and volume number and date and that stuff might better serve, uh, be better served up here, maybe. And, and I'm just thinking that because of this really kind of bare area as opposed to this up here. So food for thought. Typographically, it's there's nothing wrong here. It's, it's great. A couple of things I want to do is I want to just draw a quick guide here. What am I in? I am in PDF, so I should be able to draw a guide. There I go. All right, so let's do just do this. Let's just take this to its logical spot. And we can see a couple of alignment issues. Um, I'm going to move that in just a little bit. A little bit. Okay even just a touch more. Good enough. All right, so as we can see, um, you've got some issues here with alignment, okay? Now the T's are either gonna hang, the, the bar of the T is either gonna hang off the edge of the um, this alignment right here, or the T itself, the crossbar of the T is gonna line up, but not halfway. You make a decision and stick with it. I think it's better to drop the T over the edge um, so that everything lines up. The, uh, okay, and then you come down here, your N's, N's are good, five C's and A's are good, the seven and the R is good, the two is good, but then all of a sudden you have this, again, you have this, this problematic um, bar on the, the, the T. And so this time down here, you've elected it to align the top of the bar with your alignment as opposed to the, the, the uh, descender, okay? What that's doing is it's causing this whole thing right here to appear as it's shifted over. I immediately noticed it. Um, that's an issue that's gonna have to be rectified. The easy fix is gonna be moving this over and getting your, the, your T's in alignment. Um, but then you're gonna have to figure out, well, the easy fix to continue on that is to align that and then get rid of these, these um, honor your body issue, these rules, these vertical uh, horizontal rules right here, um, because those are causing a problem as well. Where do you align those? 
All right, so so that's a little bit weird. You've got some uh, kerning issues right here. Look how far that O is from that T. Look how far that E is from that S. Okay, and this S from this T. And don't forget, the larger your type is, the more closely you have to pay, pay attention to your kerning. And then you have other areas where your kerning is really tight, like right here. Okay, um, let's move on to the contents page. Uh, interesting, interesting. I, I don't know if I would have used the same image again. I would change that out, I think. Um, for your portfolio. A couple of things here. This is really beautiful right here. This little typographic composition right here. It's, it's very, very nice. However, you've got some alignment issues. Let me just command R that, bring this. And you can see you've got some alignment issues here. Okay, so you have that E, the S is out of alignment. So is this box right here. Okay. Um, these are all very beautiful little typograms. This is beautiful. I love it. Great job. Hanging punctuation right here. That S. That, that S should align with the rest of the type, and that punctuation should hang over the end. I don't like this in a box. I don't think there's a reason for it to be in a box. And I think the type here is enormous. Print this page out. You'll see what I mean. This area here, why don't you create one of these cool little compositions here? Um, forget the white background, forget this enormous letting here, and, and just, you know, just go with what you're doing, okay? And now here, I've got a couple of things here. This, it's gorgeous. I mean, there's, you, typographically, you are, you're, you're spot on. Well, almost spot on. A couple of problems that are going to come up in, um, um, portfolio that may not come up in, in the real world. Why that happens is because we're here to teach classic basic foundational rules, while sometimes in the real world they don't pay attention to that. Good example of that would be all of these little widows here. In the real world, you might get away with those. In typography, in class, you won't. This is going to, that's not going to grade well, that little word sleep. This K kind right here. Um, those you need to take care of, okay? That typically would be a widow too. It's too short. You know, I, I, that is definitely a widow. And on the last last line, that's a critical error because it it's just creates this really weird area right here. Okay. Um, other than that, your rags are okay, but um, your rags, of course, you want them to go in and out, in and out, in and out, in and out. Not perfectly, but not any great, you know, fluctuations like this here. And no. Definitely no patterns like these wave patterns right here. Okay, remember in and out, in and out, in and out consistently, but not um, perfectly, you know, not perfectly aligned in and out, in and out, and then, but, and then of course, not any drastic fluctuations. I want to, I want to zoom in here a little bit because I see something over here that I thought I was going to say very, very nicely done. Where the heck was that? Here it is right here. And pull a guide. Let's see. It almost looks like, yes, you did hang your punctuation over there. Mary Grace, outstanding. Very nicely done. I'm impressed. But the problem is, is that your punctuation is not hung elsewhere right there okay so that of course that s would align with that s and that punctuation would hang but this is great man awesome you're the first stu student in about four or five classes that has done that so as <laughs> i'm really pleased right now um you just do a quick baseline check here yeah you're gonna have some alignment issues right here Okay, these are consistent. That one isn't. And I think that these pull quotes are so large that I think they could be smaller. And I think the letting could be reduced on that so that you could bring this, start this page a little bit lower so we could get some perfect baseline alignment. Typically, you want either the baselines to align, and that's called... Um, um, 
Oh, that's called skyscraping. When the baselines align, it's called skyscraping because um, it you can have fluctuating um, top lines, okay? Um, but if they all f fall on the same baseline, that's called um, skyscraping. And then clotheslining would be if they all fell on the same vertical, uh, the same horizontal plane at the top of the um, text boxes. And then they they ended in fluctuating baselines, okay? So, all right. Well, I mean, um, if you want to get technical, we can go over and take a look at these things right here and go through the list here. Um, to see what has you know what you've done and what you haven't done, but yeah, I just kind of put that there for show because I think well, not I shouldn't say that it's not for show. There's a lot of students that I need to go through that list. You're not one of them, so um, I, I'm just really super pleased. And I'm I'm over ten minutes, so I gotta, I got to cut this short. So all right, cool. Thank you very much, and um, great job.